Hey, hey, hey. Good morning, afternoon, evening, my favorite charger mathematicians. Um, today, we're going to be embarking on the quest that is solving quadratic equations by using the quadratic formula. The quadratic formula is super duper ultra versatile. It will solve any quadratic equation, any quadratic equation. So if the time comes and someone says, please factor slash solve this quadratic equation, you can go to the quadratic formula each and every time without fail and solve. Um, so here's what we're gonna do. Um, we're gonna remember that to do this, we must have standard form. What is standard form you might be asking? Well, as a matter of fact, the standard form is listed here on your notes, right there. AX squared plus BX plus C equals zero. Everything is on the same side of the equation and it has to be equal to zero to be a quadratic equation. Now let's get to what the actual quadratic formula is. It's gonna be X equals because we're solving for X. This is the possibility of the solutions for X. X equals negative B plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac, and that's all divided by 2a. Notice the division symbol, the fraction bar here, goes underneath the negative b as well. Everything on the top is divided by 2a, not only, not just, the radical, the whole shebang is divided by 2a. Now, so I can get this stuck in your head for the rest of eternity, here's a song that explains to you so you can remember what the equation is. Are you prepared? x equals negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. Ha ha! Now you have it stuck in your brains. Um, so let's get to the use of the actual quadratic formula. First things first, we're gonna to need to know what A, B, and C are in our quadratic equation that we're given. Um, example one here is not in standard form. We need to make that happen. So we're gonna add 20 to each side to make this be in standard form. X squared minus 12X plus 20 equals zero, that's standard form. Now we can say A is the number in front of X squared, and that's the imaginary one. B is the number in front of X, and that is negative 12. Remember, it has to take the sign in front of it with it. C is the constant that we just moved over, and that is 20. Now, all we have to do are plug these three numbers into the quadratic formula I gave you above. So it's always going to be x equals, x equals negative b. So negative, negative 12 plus or minus the square root of b squared, that's negative 12 squared minus 4 times a is 1, and c is 20. And that's all divided by 2 times a, which is 1. Now, let's do a couple things all at once. We'll simplify and get rid of double negatives. We're going to square and do all the multiplication under the radical first, all at once. Hold on to your hats. x equals positive 12 plus or minus the square root of negative 12 squared is 144 minus 4 times 1 times 20 is 80. And that is all over 2 times 1 is 2. Um, now, we're going to do the, all the subtraction underneath the radical. We know that 144 minus 180 is 64. So this becomes positive 12 plus or minus the square root of 64 
divided by two. Well, 64, lucky for us, is a perfect square. Per square root of 64 is eight. So we've got 12 plus or minus eight over two. Almost there. Now, this plus or minus that's in the center, you might be wondering, what in the world am I doing with that? Well, this is where we'll split this uh, into two different solutions. I'm going to go above, so don't get confused here. We're going to have one solution is x, or 12 plus 8 over 2, and the other one is 12 minus 8 over 2. So we split that plus and minus up into two different problems. 12 plus 8 is 20 over 2, and that's 10. 12 minus 8 is 4 over 2, and that's 2. So our solutions, as we've been writing them forever, x equals 10 comma 2 is how I'd like for you to write that. Not in the photo math way. x1 equals 10 and x2 equals 2. Jeez, if there was ever a way to show me that you were not actually doing the work yourself, it was by it would be by writing it the photo math way. Lord help us. All right, um, let's keep moving on here. Um, you can see that, um, oh, I don't know why that won't move. Let's see. Well, we'll just scoot it up there. Um, you can see that for example two, it says the same same instructions here. Solve using the quadratic formula, round to the nearest tenth if necessary. I want you to ignore that part, and I really just want you if it if it's not a perfect square, we're just going to leave it in a fraction. I don't care about the perfect tenth part. So uh, part A already in standard form for you. So we'll do A is three, B is. 5 and C is negative 12. Let's plug it into our equation. X equals negative B is 5 plus or minus the square root. B squared is 5 squared uh, minus 4 times A times C all divided by 2 times a. All right, we're going to kind of do a bunch of simplification all at once like we did above. So x equals that negative parentheses 5 just becomes negative 5 plus or minus the square root of 5 squared is 25. And then we've got negative 4 times positive 3 is negative 12. And negative 12 times negative 12 is positive 144. And that's all divided by 6. Okay, now let's do the addition in the radical. We've got negative 5 plus or minus the square root of 169 divided by 6. 169 is a perfect square. So we've got negative 5 plus or minus 13 divided by 6. We'll have two different solutions. Negative 5 plus 13 divided by 6, and negative 5 minus 13 divided by 6. Negative 5 plus 13 is 8 over 6, and we can simplify that and make it 4 thirds. Negative 5 minus 13 is negative 18 over six, and we can simplify that and make it uh, negative three. So our two answers, x equals positive four thirds. Ugh, that's a four. Whoa, that's, oh, hold on, bear with me. Eraser is elusive around here. Four thirds and negative three. So one thing we didn't talk about when we um, were graphing parabolas is what the solutions mean. And you may have picked it up um, from, one, from the Desmos activity. The solutions of your quadratic equation are where they cross the x-axis. So if you were to go into Desmos um, graphing calculator, which is how I would check these, by the way, and go to Desmos graphing calculator and 
type in this equation, 3x squared plus 5x minus 12 equals 0, you're going to get two vertical lines as solutions. And they should be at x equals 4 thirds and x equals negative 3. Okay? This is how you should check your work for all of these. When you get a solution on your, on your parabola, or if, so it'll just be a parabola if you leave out the equals zero. But if you put equals zero, you'll have two vertical lines, one at four thirds and one at negative three. All right, I want you to try the next one on your own. Um, notice right off the bat, not in standard form, fix that first and then work towards um, using the quadratic formula. Okay, ready, set, go. All right, let's get this baby moved around. Um, I'm gonna have to subtract 25 from each side and get 10x squared minus 5x minus 25 is zero. Now we're ready for the quadratic formula. We have x equals negative, negative five. Oh, sorry, I didn't list what A, B, and C were first. A is 10, B is negative five, C is negative 25. All right, um, so X equals negative negative five plus or minus the square root of negative five squared minus four times 10 times negative 25. All of that divided by 2 times 10. So let's do a little super simplification. Negative negative 5 is positive 5. Plus or minus the square root of negative 25 squared is positive. Negative 5 squared is positive 25. And then we go to this three-termed guy. Negative 4 times 10 is negative 40. Negative 40 excuse me, times negative 25 is negative, positive, excuse me, positive 1,000. And then on the bottom, everything divided by 20. So let's simplify what's in the radical. X equals five plus or minus the square root of 1,025 divided by 20. Now we need to see if uh, 1,025 is a perfect square, and it's not. So um, we're just gonna leave it like this. This is gonna be our answer for right now. So we above, we split it into two different equations. This would be the same as x equals five plus the square root of 1025 over 20, and then five minus the square root of 1025 over 20. We could simplify it a little bit more, but right now I don't I don't care about it, honestly. Um, so if you got to this box in answer, good on you. That was not an easy one. Let's keep it going here. Example three, same idea. We need to get um, standard form going on. So let's subtract 12 from each side. We get x squared minus 4x minus 12 is 0. So we've got a is 1, b is negative 4, and c is negative 12. Put it in quadratic formula. x equals negative negative 4 plus or minus the square root of negative 4 squared minus four times one times negative 12, all divided by two times one. Super simplifying, here we come. That's four plus or minus the square root of 16 plus 36 divided by two. That's the same as four plus or minus the square root of uh, 52 over two. 
52 is not a perfect square. So we're going to call it quits there and have that be our answer. Yay! Um, I think I think you can totally do that. Um, last part that we're going to talk about here is um, when we use the quadratic formula. First is when factoring is not your first choice. If you look at it, if you give it a quick glance and you notice that it's not going to be easy to factor, you can go to the quadratic formula. Um, we factor when we can easily see what the factors are. Um, but like we've seen, not all of our equations are factorable. When we're, we use graphing, if we want to approximate a solution, um, or you want to test and see if there is a solution at all, Remember, if your um, if your parabola doesn't cross the x-axis, there is no solution. We um, use the square roots when we solve, um, which we're going to be doing sooner than later. Um, when our equation can be written, x squared equals a constant, which we haven't really talked about that yet. But that's only if there's no x term. In the quadratic formula, we can literally use for any equation to solve. Uh, like we talked about above, um, or not above, uh, in our next lesson, we're going to talk about the radical and what that means. But right now, I want you to know that uh, what's under the radical sign, so what is under here in the quadratic formula, b squared minus 4ac, is called the discriminant. That was not enough room. Um, it tells us how many solutions our quadratic equation is going to have. So if your discriminant is negative, if your discriminant, if b squared minus 4ac is less than zero, we're going to have no real solutions. We're going to call it zero rs. If the discriminant, b squared minus 4ac, is equal to zero, you're going to have one real solution. If your discriminant is greater than zero, you will have two real solutions, okay? Um, so this parabola I drew up here, this would have had a discriminant that was negative. Um, for one real solution, that means your vertex lies on the x-axis. And for a greater than zero discriminant, that means your parabola crosses the x-axis in two different places. Okay, so we're going to use this discriminant to see how many solutions that we're going to have. Um, we see this equation, for example, four. It's definitely not in standard form, so we'll add three to each side, and we get four x squared plus five x plus three equals zero. Um, oh, excuse me. Um, so then we need to find what A, B, and C are. A is four. B is five. C is three. We're only going to use this B squared minus four AC part right now. So we've got five squared minus four times four times three is our discriminant. Well, that's 25 minus 16 times three is 48. So we have 25 minus 48 is negative 23. And that is a negative number. So that falls right here. Your discriminant is negative. That means you have zero real solutions. So that would be your answer. Negative 23 and zero real solutions. That is all for us today, my little cats and kittens. I hope you're fantastic. As always, let me know if you need some help. I am here to help you. Um, I miss you terribly. Hugs to you. Bye-bye.